Doc Danger and the Danger Squad, Part 1, Something to Read. The pages of the near-century-old magazine were so fragile they threatened to disintegrate if so much as breathed on too hard. The cover was frayed and bore the ravages of time, yet the lurid illustration nonetheless lit a spark in her imagination, its melodramatic tableau struggling to be seen through a haze of time-worn yellow fadedness and a web of wrinkles and creases. The title splashed across the top was rendered in large, unevenly spaced letters, Breathtaking Tales. Just below the date stamp, November of 1933, the issue was labeled number 17. The kid took a comfortable place on the couch and carefully set the magazine down in front of her. She once again scrutinized the cover image, fascinated by its somewhat obsolete prurience, its attempt to shock the sensibilities of an era that was already long past, well before she herself had been born. In the background of the tableau, a skinny, tuxedo-clad man with a pencil-thin mustache was bent nearly backwards, his face twisted in a sinister rictus of sadistic laughter. At his feet, a gray-furred cat was sitting, looking up at its master affectionately. In the foreground, a well-tanned blonde woman sat in a gleaming metal chair. The shirt she wore was badly shredded, indeed the damage so extensive that it was a mystery as to how the piece of clothing still stayed on. The heroine's impressive musculature struggled against the ropes that kept her lashed to the seat, and her mouth was an O of astonishment as she eyed an intravenous cable, one end of which was sticking sloppily into her upper arm, while the other end was connected to a bag that dangled from an irrigation tower. The bag itself was black, emblazoned garishly with a skull and crossbones, so that no one might mistake the pestilential nature of the liquid contained therein. A blocky, mechanical figure stood nearby, menace exuding improbably from its dead, perfectly circular eyes. It seemed quite prepared, on the off chance that the blonde woman might manage to free herself from bondage, to attack her and force her back onto the chair by means of the jointed tubular limbs that sprouted unnaturally from its cylindrical torso. Just below the magazine's bombastic